Reading to you from Psalm 41 from the Authorized Version of the Scriptures. <clears throat> Psalm 41. Please, if you have an Authorized Version of the Scriptures, read along with me. Please. Just going to be a very quick video. I'm going to touch on something that a brother brought up to me this morning, which was... Thank you. Psalm 41, verses 1 on to verse 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor, poor and needy, those who need the Lord, but also poor who are like homeless, broke, that kind of thing. Okay? The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not dis deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the, the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sin. Psalm 107, <clears throat> verses 1 on to verse 9. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Now these are references onto a spiritual need. Absolutely. But if you haven't noticed, there are many homeless people, at least around by us, many, many, many homeless people. And um, the one thing about the homeless, we have to remember a lot of things about them, but Proverbs 27, just one verse, Proverbs 27, Proverbs 27, verse 7, Proverbs 27, verse 7. The full soul loatheth an honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. You know, here in America, and also other places in the world, we have this thing which is called fast food. Now, fast scripturally is totally different to how the language of today equates the word fast, okay? Fast in the word in scripture does not one time make a reference on to speedily, okay? It doesn't. But we have in America called what is called fast food. Quick, convenient, easy. Uh, it's better, I think it's more equated onto fast as quickly drawing people onto the grave. Because fast food is probably one of the most unhealthiest um, ways you can go for nourishment and sustenance. Okay? There are some better than others. Okay? But sometimes, especially with the homeless, that option, especially in America, with the genetically modified organisms that are prevalent. You gotta remember, you of other nations are not like America, where other nations have brains in their heads enough to recognize, whoa, genetically modified organisms are dangerous, okay? A lot of other nations out there are a lot smarter and wiser about GMOs than America is, okay? Seeds of death. Okay, you, uh, we'll be in the description box. Seeds of Death. You watch that uh, documentary. Okay, very good. That talks about the GMO kind of thing that's going on, especially here in America. Other nations don't have the same problem in that respect as we do. They have it, but not like we do. It is almost virtually impossible. It can be done, but it's, okay, it's hard, very hard. Not impossible. It's very hard to get away from anything genetically modified in America. 
But when you're a homeless man, a homeless woman, starving, sometimes they don't have that option. They don't. They don't. You know, if you haven't eaten for a couple of days, and you're homeless, and you can't afford anything, and someone comes around and offers you a cheeseburger from McDonald's, health-wise, you probably should avoid it. But if you haven't eaten anything for days, you're going to eat that day. And there's the trap. There's the trap. And unfortunately, here in America, uh, inflation is just rising, rising, rising. Why? Because an army is uh, present around us. So the prices are going up. I like that from the art of war. Talked about that in one rent video that the Lord had me, a rare rent video that the Lord had me to do. Okay? But unfortunately, here in America, it's very, very difficult to get away from the genetically modified organism thing. Very difficult. Very difficult. Very. And healthier food is far more expensive than the poison. Now, yes, it's worth buying healthier food, but then again, you got to remember, at this state in the game, organic. Why is it organic? Oh, because we said so. How can you prove that it's organic? Huh? How? And organic just means without certain chemicals on it. Okay? But see, we don't really know. There's a lot of crops out there the farmers are being sold by the government that they only last a year okay that they only last a year so they have to be dependent on the government to get their genetically modified seeds okay Gen processed foods and when you're homeless when you're one of these poor souls out there starving haven't eaten for days. If you can, if the opportunity and option is available to you to give them some, something healthier, then absolutely. Absolutely. But unfortunately, that option isn't always available. And to the, and what does this say? In verse, what did we look at? Verse 7. The full soul loatheth a honeycomb, but to the hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet. Now, yes, that's talking in a spiritual sense. Okay, yes, it is. But it, it's, 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 it's sad because here in America, you, you can't really get away from, from the genetically modified thing. That's part of the thing that the Jesuits have done to kill us. Okay? This is 12-year-old boy that lives in an apartment uh, two, uh, two rows away from us. One, two, okay? He's t as tall as I am. You know, he's a, he's, he's a built young man, not muscles, but he's, he's like almost fully grown. He's 12 years old. I'm like, wow, as tall as I am, 12 years old. How does he get that way? Could it be by some of the food that we're feeding people? Huh, that, are, that they're being fed? You know, with all the natural growth hormones that are in, like chickens and meats and stuff like that? How does an 11-year-old girl get to be taller than my wife and almost full-figured? Hmm? How? Hmm? Could it be by the poisons that are being injected, being fed to us by the Vatican, by all these companies? And, and it's sad. It's sad. It's sad. And if you have the option to you know, to help the homeless, help them. Help them. Okay? You should not give the homeless money. I've done that even against my better judgment. Okay? I have. Why? Because you don't know if they're going to use the money you give them for drugs or alcohol. That is a fact. 
So what do you do? You go with them. Buy them a meal. Okay. Hey, if you can afford them something healthy, like an apple or something, or something from a grocery store, and buy them something healthy, go for it. But if you're in a situation where you can't, and you got a starving guy there, or a very hungry guy, I should say, there, or woman, and you're only left with one of these other options, what do you do? They're hungry. They haven't eaten for days. They gobble it up like they, they inhale it basically because they were so hungry what do you do what do you do what do you do in the book of James chapter 2 now James 2 expository video will be in the description box okay you got to rightly divide the word of truth okay James uh, book of James is written for the Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble doctrinally okay but in James chapter 2 James chapter 2 Verses 13 on to verse 16. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that hath shewed no mercy, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. See, and that's written in a, in a context because of why. During the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. Eternal security is only there for the 144,000 sealed Jews. Don't believe the satanic scoundrel uh, fake gracers telling you it's by grace through faith during the time of Jacob's trouble. They're telling that to, to you to deceive you so that you will take the mark of the beast and go to hell. Watch out for them idiots. Okay? But, let's continue. What doth it profit, my brother? Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? Yes, it can today! Yes, it can! By his grace, his unmerited favor by our faith or through our faith yes by grace through faith yes 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 and even the fake gracer will say yeah our faith saves us today but here James says can faith save him well that's James and Paul speaking back to back no James is addressing the Jews for the time of Jacob's trouble. Another dispensation. Questions? Expository video will be in the description box. If you don't want to hear it, then go to hell. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Hmm. What doth it profit? Why do we look at this? How many people, it's like, oh, yeah, a homeless person comes along, it's like, I'll pray for you. Dude, can you buy me some? I'm, I haven't eaten. I'll pray for you. Like, dude, can, can you get me a water? Or something that's like, I'll pray for you. Or you walk on, say, oh, those poor guys. Oh, why not? Why not? Why don't you? No, you shouldn't give the homeless money. Okay? I've gone against my better judgment myself. Yes, I have. Okay? Yes, I have. But why? Because you don't know what they're going to use it for. I can't, I can't tell you. How many times the Lord has opened a situation for me where I've went and gotten a homeless man from a deli, a sandwich. Yes, I've gotten homeless people fast food. There was no other options. Okay, yes, I've gotten them a bottle of water. Yes, we went to a restaurant and had I had a meal with them. Okay, yes, yes, go with them. If they're hungry, you'll know because you'll, they'll come inhale it. It's like, whoa, like the one dude. It's like he and he inhaled that, you know, brother. He inhaled that. It's like you want another one? <laughs> I have it here. Let's go, you know. You, you go with them. Be with them. Like I've told you before, a lot of the homeless people just want to be heard. They just want to be acknowledged as a person, a spirit, soul, and body, okay? 
And when you give them your time, when you give them those things that are needful, yes, you should. Yes, you should avoid the toxins. Yes, you should. But you've got to remember, here in America, that's not the easiest thing to do. Okay? And when you have no other options and something is there to someone who hasn't eaten it for days, and that's the sad thing. That's the sad thing. And for that, we go to Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Now, remember, Ezekiel chapter 34 is talking about, you know, there is much instruction in righteousness. And what we're looking at, Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 16 on to verse 24, about, you know, for example, how Rome has destroyed America. And how Christianity, with the, all the, the Bibles and with all the smorgasbord uh, demonations out there, and all the types of Christs that are being offered. Yes. Yes. Check this out. Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 16 on to verse 24. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away and will bind up that which was broken and will strengthen that which was sick. But I will destroy the fat and the strong. I will feed them with judgment. Kind of like what we talked about in the previous video a little bit, you know. The elite feeding themselves off of who? The poor. Yeah. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture? But ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures, and to have drunk of the deep waters, but ye must follow the residue with your feet. Now, spiritually, look at that. Look at how all the Jesuit infiltration to everything that is even called Christian today. That's why I'm not a Christian. Okay? Look at all the infiltration. Look at how Satan, through Rome, has muddied the waters with his feet. Another aspect to consider, which we're doing right now, our food. Look at how Rome, through genetically modified organisms, through their agents such as Bill Gates and all these other guys, all these chemical companies, which have Jesuits at the head of them. And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet. And they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. Now spiritually, <laughs> I rest my case. Any of you, even you atheists out there, can hear that. It's like, yeah, look at what Christianity has done. And you're right. You're right. But look at what the companies, the industry, the conglomerates, the corporations with their, you know, processed foods and all the poisons. The chemtrail thing. The, you know, the thing about chemtrails, we, we, we could go off on this for a long time, but say people like, they, there are no such thing as chemtrails. Uh, there's a difference between a plain exhaust and a trail that you can see stretching for miles. That's chemtrails. Yes, Remember, I'm a conspiracy factualist, not a conspiracy theorist. The chemtrail thing is real. What those things are, what they got in them, I don't know. But it's like, come on. Anybody can see a chemtrail. Give me a break. Give me a break, okay? Give me a break. But see, here in America, which has readily accepted the things of Rome, People are eating things that are poisoned by their feet. Okay? And as for my flock, they eat that which ye have trodden with your feet, and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet. And this is true in twofold. Christianity, with the fake grace, easy believism, satanic, ecumenical, Roman Catholic doctrine. But also, 
with what we are ingesting and with the chemtrails and all this. Let's keep reading. Therefore thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, because ye have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till ye have scattered them abroad. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle, and I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And see, that is talking about a reference onto the kingdom of heaven. Because the kingdom of heaven, guess what, dear saint, dear people, is going to be farming. Go to Zechariah chapter 14. Uh, Zechariah chapter 14, verses 16 on to verse 19. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Now this is talking about after the uh, seven year period, the time of Jacob's trouble, and then the second coming, okay? People are going to be going to Jerusalem at the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? Okay? During the Kingdom of Heaven, okay? Kingdom of Heaven, all works, okay? This is proof to it, too, okay? And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. You have no rain, you have no food. Today, with the processed company, factory food, you don't need rain. But during the kingdom of heaven, you're going to need rain for crops. Think about it. They can create food in a laboratory nowadays. Processed food. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. Okay? Yes, they can. Yes, farming is still a major part of our food source, but it is a farming made from genetically modified seeds. The majority. You don't know if your organic whatever is truly organic. You do not know. <laughs> you got to trust them. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. Okay? And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, who will be sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, okay, after the time of Jacob's trouble, when he comes back with comes back at a second coming with us who go up at the redemption of the purchase possession. Okay? Yeah. And also Amos chapter 9. Okay, these are these are the these are where you go to prove about what the kingdom of heaven is going to be like. Okay? Amos chapter 9 verses 11 on to verse 15. Again. See, during the uh, during the time of Jacob's trouble God's judgment is going to be put upon this earth. Satan is going to uh, be allowed to destroy, going forth conquering and to conquer. The rivers, the waters are going to be made poison. Trees are going to be destroyed. Fish are going to be killed. So, at the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be agrarian, farming. A thousand years of farming, of healing of the earth. Bringing it back so it, so it will. Verses 11 on verse 15 in Amos chapter 9. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches of thereof. What day? Second coming. When Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords, will be sitting on a throne in Jerusalem. That's east. Okay? And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Farming during the kingdom of heaven. Farming. Yeah. 
We're going to be farmers. Hey, brother, you're going to get your farm. So am I. <laughs> okay? And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. Farming in the kingdom of heaven. And I will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them set the Lord thy God. So eventually the Lord in the kingdom of heaven is going to heal all of this nonsense. And we're going to get back to healthy, real food. Don't neglect the homeless. Don't neglect the homeless. Yeah, a lot of them are there because of their bad choices. Yes, that is the facts. But we are to have mercy on people. Go with them, buy them food, buy them clothing, buy them drink. Sit with them. Listen to them. Dude, you know how many doors were opened because we just sat there and listened to what they had to say? And when you sit and listen, and they spill so many of the homeless that I've encountered, I just want to hear that. And then when you, in that situation, the Lord stirs you, you take out your sword. Okay? And present to them the gospel. Their need for salvation. Beautiful moments. Treasured moments. But how can you get that if you walk by them and say, hey, I'll pray for you. Oh, poor homeless guy. Somebody should help him. Or I'm not going to help him. You know, he put himself there. Good for you. Survival of the fittest, huh? No. Okay. Let's go get something to eat. Buy some, uh, buy some beans or something. Like, I've done that before. Went and got some canned goods for some people. Okay? I mean, even the one guy, it's like, well, I don't have a can opener. Hey, don't worry. We'll go to the Dollar 25 tree. Get you some can, uh, canned uh, food and get you a can opener and stuff like that. There you go. There you go. Get them some bottled water. Get them some milk. Whatever. Okay? Sit with them and talk with them. But remember, we there's that option is always not available. And that's the sad part. Blessed are the merciful. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If I'm ever out there, homeless, I hope, I would hope, that one day, if I were homeless, a fellow saint would come up to me. It's like, let's go get a bite to eat. It's like, okay, okay, let's do it. Then if they would like one, it was like, hey, brother, I'm, I'm a saint like you. I'm a saint like you. Who knows what would happen, you know? But see, that's not why we do it in the first place. That's a fellow spirit, soul, and body right there. You got to remember, ye sometimes were disobedient yourselves. Ephesians chapter 1, uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, excuse me, verses 1 on to verse 3, and you hath he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins, where in, times, in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, you know, you were once one of these yourself? Have you forgotten that? Have you forgotten from whence you came? Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, 
and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. We were once there too. So the next time you start, you know, a Christian, thinking you're all this, you come across a homeless man, homeless woman, who smells like a dog, and all they want is some food. A little and someone to actually give a rap, sit them, make eye contact with them, and hear them. I'm a big proponent for that, what is called, referred to as the ministry of presence. Ministry of presence, you're not going to find anywhere in Scripture, but you're going to see in Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. Job's three friends. Job's three friends. They started out right. They started out right. But then what happened? They had to put in their two cents. And most of us know the story. Job chapter 2. Here's a, here's a concept of the ministry of presence. Job chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 13. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliaphaz the Temanite, and Eli, 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 uh, Bildad, excuse me, the Shuhite, and Zohar the Nemethite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, couldn't recognize him because of what Satan was allowed to do to him, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. Talking about weeping with those who weep and rejoice with those who do rejoice. I've, I've seen some of these. You know, I'm a Christian, dressed in, uh, dressed in short shorts, showing off their bosom, and a homeless guy looking like he was, you know, like a caveman, asking for help. And I'll pray for you. Ew, don't touch me. I'm walking off. He probably wanted to rape me. Well, I think I very highly of yourself and you're dressed like a whore anyway. Yeah. 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 Verse 13. So they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights. And none spake a word on him, for they saw that his grief was very great. In Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Which is something that I always seek to live by. <laughs> it's hard sometimes. But <clears throat> verses 12 on to verse 13. 15. Uh, 12 on to verse 16. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given the hospitality. How many of these YouTube personalities, if one of their brethren showed up unannounced, how many of them would take them into house and home? I wonder. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless someone who's persecuting you? Demonstrate and shew them truth. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. You know that homeless person that you disregard, who smells like a dog, you wouldn't want to light a match because of his alcohol breath. That's still a spirit, soul, and body, a person that and you might not have been in that state yourself, but you know what? You were once in the dunghill yourself. How many of you have forgotten that? Let's 
going to be it for this little video. Brother, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the, the, Lord, the Lord did something with it. Thank you. Just a little reminder to you, brethren. Here in America, the if the Jesuits select that guy, Trump, you think it's bad now. Anyway, but watch the previous videos. Anyway, that's going to be it. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Come on, stop.